Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Run-Up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And today I'm not going to say someone is on standby <laughs> or somewhere else. So you are here to talk for yourself. <laughs> good morning, viewers. Uh, it's nice to be here in the studio live mm -hmm. and not to be... Uh, on standby <laughs> or, joining or somewhere Zoom. else yeah. yeah yeah it's nice to be here it, it always feels like uh, you know we have a brother in the diaspora and uh, we're talking to him from the <laughs> diaspora but today it's good to have you here in the studio yeah. and i'm just wondering how you managed it because these are really perilous times in nigeria maybe not much about the insecurity but there are other things that are biting nigerians more than uh, even the insecurity we're talking about, we've been talking about all these years. I wonder how you managed to get to the studio early enough to do <laughs> Well, I did. Um, I mean, the, the, the situation is the same, basically. You have the same traffic problems, people queuing for fuel, people queuing for the, uh, to, to get the new Naira notes uh, mm -hmm. through ATM machines. They, they, they don't cause traffic. It's mm -hmm. the people queuing for fuel who are causing the traffic. You know, and then, of course, it's like most of Lagos is shut down because there's either one rehabilitation or one reconstruction that mm -hmm. is happening. But um, one, one, one point, you know, which one perhaps would like to emphasize and which is probably exacerbating the problem of uh, movement is the fact that it does appear, I see some of these constructions or rehabilitation works uh, have been seemingly... Uh, jettisoned, you know, you don't mm. find people there working. Mm. Uh, we don't know why. Uh, and I think, um, I know some time ago the state government said all the projects are ongoing, uh, but there are some where you don't find people working, or mm. the tempo of activity has significantly reduced. And I think the government needs to address that so that people don't have the impression that because elections are around the corner, mm -hmm. then all the, you know, the government apparatus has gone to sleep. You know, if the contractors are not doing what they're supposed to be doing or are taking advantage that maybe they might not be under such scrutiny as before, I think the authorities should wake up and make sure that contractors are actually working full time uh, to reduce all this uh, gridlock and traffic jams and things. There could also be another theory if the government wants to guard against uh, theories that may not be true because sometimes you just want someone to feel that uh, you're really working. You take your tools, drop them there and leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe it's not the contractors trying to uh, play hanky-panky just because people will not monitor them well. And people, we, government should never give the people a reason to doubt whatever they're doing, mm. because they can also say, uh, is it because election is coming? They want to just show us that they're working so that when we vote them in, they carry the tools back home and <laughs> nothing <laughs> happens. Because opportunity for, for talk mm -hmm. brings doubt into the minds of the people. And, you know, government should always be plain enough so that if they run into challenges, people will understand that they have been trying their best. Okay, right now we were hoping that after the launch of the, is it the Blue Rail or something, the, the yeah. train services within yeah. Lagos, the traffic will go down a little bit. The log jam we've been finding every now and then will go down a little bit, but I don't even know if there has been any impact on the traffic because it's still happening the way it used to happen. In fact, now it's looking like uh, all the time we had enjoyed, all the, the freedom, all the space we had enjoyed during the Christmas period mm. is like uh, they're coming back with, with more anger. <laughs> like, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's use up the time that we had, we had lost at that period of Christmas. And it's really killing. And it, it tells on the economy of Lagos. For me, I don't think that is how a mega city should ever be at all. No, I mean, definitely... Um I remember many, many years ago, um, there was the late Professor Ayodele Awujobi. He was a professor of mechanical engineering at the University of Lagos. He was, un he was uh, undeniably a genius. Mm. He was a genius, okay? But he was also involved, he was concerned about the socioeconomic uh, environment and things that were happening. And he made a statement. He said, the whole of Nigeria depends on what happens within a 45 kilometer radius in Lagos. Mm. Okay? So everybody comes into this 45 kilometer radius. Whatever it is you want to do, maybe physically or somehow, mm. it passes through. 
you know, but of course more physically because everyone is coming. And that's why we have the gridlock, mm -hmm. you know. And the federal government left Lagos simply because Lagos was serving as the capital of the Lagos state, of Lagos state mm -hmm. and the federal government. Yeah. And that's why the Muritala administration decided to leave Lagos and to see maybe because they had tried everything in the Gowon era, flyovers all over the place, it didn't solve the problem. So the federal government left, went to Abuja. Now, and then Lagos State took its own capital away from Lagos Island, brought it to Ikeja. Okay? But it hasn't changed anything. So I think the solution is what the, the state government is trying to do, but I think they need to attach more urgency, mm. which is rail. rail. I don't think that road construction will solve the problem of Lagos. I think it's going to be solved by rail. And I think that the rail has to be private sector led, not government. Mm. Because then the government starts taking loans. And the government can make money from tickets, can make money from acquiring right of way for the private sector consortium that will build the rail, right? And that right of way that the government acquires can actually be converted into shares for Lagos State government in the private entity that will carry that project through. And I think we can see faster development of the rail system. Because we saw how long it took the state government to just build mile two to Marina. About 16 years. Yes, well, so about. that's already a warning, right? So I feel that as well-intentioned as the state is, government has no business building this rail. It should be concession to the private sector and across all the sectors of Lagos. That's what I feel personally will solve okay. this problem. So even if you're giving us buses, uh, let them be so attractive that people will be encouraged to leave their cars at home. Because mm. if 50 people get into their cars, that will be 50 people, 50 cars on the road. But if those same 50 people can enter a BRT bus, for instance, and be comfortable in it, then there'll be less cars on our roads. But you see that BRT right now? No AC inside. Mm -hmm. The people who are standing are even more than the people who are sitting and so many other things. Sometimes you get into that place and it has not been wiped. So uh, a lot of dust and then you have to look for your own rag and wipe. There are so many problems. But we have guests standing by and there are so many things that we want to talk with them about. Fuel scarcity may hamper movement of materials, personnel, according to INEC. With less than 25 days to the general election, the Independent National Electoral Commission has said that the scarcity of the premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol, may affect the movement of election materials and election pe uh, personnel. Also, we have the new Naira racketeering, EFCC to raid Lagos, Kaduna, Port Harcourt, currency hawkers, because there are indications that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is set to raid the Naira note racketeers in key commercial cities, including Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Kaduna. The United Nations chief advised, has advised Nigerian judges to be neutral in the adjudication of electoral disputes and may, that may arise from the forthcoming 2023 general elections. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Mohammed, advised, gave this advice uh, because the 2023 election is what everybody is saying is or may be the defining factor in the life or the political life of Nigeria. Well, this and more will be discussed with our guests when we return from this short break. Stay with us.